Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and today we're going to be doing Monk Legendaries. For quite a while, Monks only had one spec and only a few Legendaries available, and I wanted to wait until all three specs have at least someone to play with before checking out where Monks are going into the next expansion. One of the things that I think a lot of people can agree on is Monks might be, and I'm saying might be, one of the least played classes out of all the classes in the game. But could these legendaries technically get him back up there and make him as competitive as rogues and demon hunters have been? Anyway, on the beta, legendaries are going to be some of your craft with recipes, choosing specific secondary stats, so it's not going to be the same as legion legendaries, which were a lot more RNG. So hopefully Blizzard really nails the system, but I want to take a look at early views of monk legendaries, at least early in the beta before any of the changes, to see where monks are at with these extra Legos. First we're going to start off with Windwalker. I feel like this is the spec that I understand probably the best. I've tried Mistriver and I've tried Brewmaster and they're a lot of fun, even though I don't fully understand the depth of those specs. They're definitely something I want to consider, mostly from the heavy melee perspective of Windwalker, how you can really get in and start punching enemies even though you're a healer. Huge fan of that playstyle. The Brewmaster seems to be really tough with a lot of utility and player agency, so that's awesome. And Windwalker has been enjoyable because of their mastery, where as long as you don't repeat your abilities, you do more damage, which I've enjoyed from the get-go. But how can these legendary spice up the gameplay even more? Some of these Legos are going to be uh, tier set bonuses from previous expansions, or maybe legendaries from Legion. And I didn't really play a lot of Monk back in Legion or previous expansions, so there might be some legendaries that just don't recognize and they'll be new to me, but they might be not new to you guys because you've been playing Monk for a while. Anyway, take a look at Windwalker. I think these are the ones up here that are Windwalker specific. Spenders with Jade. Okay, yeah, that's the one with the Fist of Fury. So we're going to start off with a cloak, and this one reads, Whenever you deal damage to the target with Fist of Fury, you gain a stack of Chi energy, up to a maximum of 20 stacks. Using Expel Harm will cause you to detonate with Chi Explosion, dealing a bunch of damage to enemies within 8 yards. Damage is increased by 5% for each stack of Chi energy, so you basically can buff this damage by 100%. So you would... Hmm. Yeah, so 413... With Expel Harm, you would get about 4,000 damage in a single global, which is a big number. So it says here with Fist of Fury, I'm not really going to go play my rotation properly here. Now, is this really Fist of Fury? Or is it Crane Kick? It says here, use an Expel Harm, and this will be this ability here. But Expel Harm doesn't actually use up this Legendary. So this is something we already noticed, is this Legendary doesn't actually say exactly the right thing on the tooltip. So... That is weird. That is something for you to account for. We have no idea if this is supposed to work with Expel Harm or with Spinning Crane Kick. But it seems to only proc off of next Spinning Crane Kick rather than Expel Harm because pressing this ability does nothing. And this stacks up to 20, so I'm going to have to sit here for a little bit spamming Fist of Fury until we get the big combo. Since it does proc together with uh, your next Spinning Crane Kick, Dance of GG can definitely give you a little bit extra amp in combo. Or at least a little bit extra damage to amp that combo because your I mean, crank kick will do more damage and then you'll have this effect blowing up too as well so that could be really strong stacking this up to 16 17 19 yeah so we were missing literally one stack so let me try to get there as soon as possible using blackout kicks in order to give myself more cooldown reduction super glad the blizzard added the blackout kick combo where blackout kick is able to reduce the cooldown of abilities and here goes that fist of fury 20 stack so this ability should do a lot of damage when it's increased. Wait, hello, it's stacking past 24%. How high can this stack? Is this 24 the max? Because it's continuing to stack. 25, 26. Uh oh, I don't think there's a limit. Oh no, so let me just start, um, forget about my mastery. And I'll set up for a mastery before we use this ability, just to make sure this ability is above my mastery at worst to worst. 209 stacks. Okay, so it seems 30 is the max. So either they have a wrong tooltip on this ability, or everything is wrong here. But we got a maximum stacked up, 150% damage. Let's see how hard it hits. 12,000? That's literally a 12,000 chi explosion. And this does AoE damage, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, damage to enemies within 8 yards. Imagine hitting them for a big 12,000 hit. None of my abilities hit for 12,000. To give you a bit of an idea, my kick, my Rising Sun kick deals 2,800. My Fist of Fury does 5,000 over its duration of a channel. If any of the abilities crit. 
you can see, about 6,700 there, I guess, with a bit of variance of 5% that they added in the game recently. None of my abilities hit that hard. Even Whirling Dragon Punch doesn't really hit nearly that hard in a single global. 12,000 in a single setup on AoE. This is ginormous, and Monk is going to rip, rip so much aggro from the tank as soon as you use this ability. This is insane. Definitely a bit of a broken legendary since the tooltip doesn't actually align with the effect. But see the way, seems like a really strong combo. Then we have Gloves where Tiger Palm now has a 10 yard range and increases critical strike chance for 25% for 6 seconds on the target when used instantly dash to the target. When used, you instantly dash to the target? Your Tiger Palm? Is that what we're talking about? The increased critical strike cannot occur more than once every 30 seconds per target so you could swap targets. They tell me I can Tiger Palm from... Oh, okay, and it puts a debuff. Yeah, I'm unable to... Oh, okay. It looks like everybody stopped moon for a second, so it looked like the game lagged. I'm not actually getting any kind of crit buffs, am I? I guess maybe on that target I would get a crit buff for a moment, wouldn't I? I don't think this legendary works properly. Tiger Palm has a 10 yard range, so you can kind of charge the people. The 10 yard range, I'm not really feeling. Wait, whoa. Is this really 10 yards? Dude, that's not really all that far. But that's kind of cool. I can totally see you chasing after a healer. I mean, monks already have the most mobility, so you don't really need to chase after healers. You just teleport right next to them if you need to. But this extra little bit of charge is interesting. Because just the amount of mobility you can get out of it. Is you swap it from target to target. Uh, when you use instantly dash to the target, increases critical strike effect. Cannot more... Okay, so you're supposed to get a 25% chance crit strike effect on the enemy. And I am supposed to get a 25% chance, but it doesn't show any kind of debuff that says I do. Adversary is a... A thing from a covenant so it won't be anything that i can affect interesting yeah so this legendary partially works and partially doesn't i feel like with monks being so heavy mobility you don't really need this for mobility maybe the 25 percent increased chance to crit will be good especially if you're swapping targets regularly but this is 25 percent on that target not in general if this was more of a general buff i totally could see this good in mythic pluses but this one is definitely an interesting lego Then we get the pants where cheese spenders increase the damage of an egg, crackling jade lightning by 100% and reduces its cost by 5%, stacking up to 20 times. So with the ability of crackling jade lightning, cheese spenders reduce the cost of that ability. Does this actually stack up? Or I don't know if it actually does stack. Cheese spenders. So I'm spending chi. I'm using abilities like my kicks and everything to get crackling jade lightning. But it doesn't look like the effect is actually stacking up. Reduces its cost by 5%, so I'm actually not reducing the cost of this ability whatsoever. Yeah, so this legendary, I think it's safe to say, is broken, but I believe this is a legendary from Legion. And if it's anything as strong as the Legion legendary was for Crackling Jade Lightning from Woundwalkers, it's going to be one of the best. But I have no idea what the original was like. I don't even know if the numbers are right. If it's increasing chain light, uh, Jade Lightning by 100%, if that was the same as Legion. Or the stacking effect by 5% 20 times, if that is the same as Legion, I have no idea. So it's not like I can really test it right now, but if it's anything close to Legion, I think it's going to be popular just from the fact that in Legion, this was one of the more popular legendaries. Then we have the chest where Fist of Fury, when Fist of Fury ends, your critical strike chance of Rising Sun Kick is increased by 30% for 5 seconds. Rising Sun critical strikes reduce the cooldown of Fist of Fury by 1.5 seconds. Wow, I like the idea behind it. Okay, so if we were to generate a little bit of column points... Right, we'll just generate all the comp points we need. We'll go for a bit of old Fist of Fury, and we are not gaining any kind of buff for a Rise of Sun Kick. It does work. Okay, so that did get reduced. I was watching my Fist of Fury to see if it would get reduced. As soon as this number jumped to a smaller number, I would basically look up to see if there was a crit from a kick. So this does work partially. I don't know if the actual crit percent chance is there, but if you can get your crit to about 20%, with this one you would get a 1 in 2 chance for... Your Fist of Fury, or you kick out of Fist of Fury to crit, which I think could be maybe decent, one and two. So this could speed up your creation a little bit as a Windwalker, but I don't think this is a massive one, or at least not as massive as some of the other LEGOs Windwalkers have. Then we're going to take a look at the Mist Weaver Monk, and first of all, we want to make sure we have the right trinkets. Mist Weavers are going to be uh, here. Activating Thunder Focus, Focus T causes you to exhale Breath of Yulon, healing six allies within 15 yards over almost 3,000 over two seconds. So as I use uh, Thunder Focus T. Ooh, wasn't this a thing before? This was definitely a thing in some expansion. I'm not really sure which one it was for monks. 
But that's pretty cool. I think this is going to give you a little bit extra AoE healing. A simple legendary, but I think it's going to be fitting because you use Thunder Focus C quite a lot. So lining this up to have some alleys in front of you would be helpful. We have Necklace where healing with Enveloping Mist or Vivify, channeling Soothing Mist, increases your healing dump by 6% and reduces the mana cost by 10% stacks up to 3. When you see the mist channel ends, this effect is cancelled. So the idea here would be to, I guess, maintain the soothing mist buff. And I guess you would never really want to reduce the soothing mist buff ever. Yeah, as long as you're soothing misting people and never having to move. This is going to be quite a good legendary. So you're reducing the cost of the other ability. Oh. Okay, so you... Hmm. Hold on. Isn't that the other legendary that I have here? Life cycles. Okay, so let's turn off life cycles real quick. Just because that's the one that's giving me an extra buff. So if I'm healing this guy. And I'm casting Soothe Focus. Healing done by enveloping mist. Is increased. Oh, okay. So if... Oh, okay. So as long as I'm channeling single target, you can really just get the most value AoE healing. Okay, so this is an interesting one. If you are going to be going to fights where there's going to be a lot of AoE healing, primarily for smaller groups and you need burst healing, you would use Vivify to heal your single target and healing your Renewing Miss active also with a Vivify. So you could spread, let's say, Renewing Miss here, Renewing Miss here, and you'll heal this guy, and let's say they're a tank that's taking a lot of damage, but also the rest of your party's taking damage. It's kind of like doubles up healing for everybody else. Interesting. So this is mostly good for burst healing situations where you know you're going to be spamming Vivify. The mana cost is going to be reduced so you can use this more often. And increases the healing that you do, so this is interesting. But changing or resetting Soothing Mist does remove the buff. So you can basically just start at the beginning uh, on an ally, do this. And as long as the Soothing Mist have, you basically maintain this buff. Simple as that, but as soon as you switch it, it's gone. So that's going to make it that much harder for you to get the most amount of value if you're having to target swap. In Mythic Plus situations and in Raid situations where there's a lot of damage going out and you need burst healing, this actually could be a good legendary. It's interesting, and I like the fact that it plays into this very specific playstyle of, in a single Soothing Mist, you can get a lot of value for that heal. So, I like that, actually. Huge, huge fan. I wonder if there's going to be particular builds around this LEGO. Then we have the belt where Renew and Mist applies Extend Life on the initial target, instantly healing them for 50, which seems like a low number, and healing... Increasing all healing down to them by 15% for 12 seconds. When you heal with the Enveloping Mist or Vivify, 50% of the heal also applied to the target with your extended life effect. Wait, so it can just... There goes extended life. And now both of them have extended life. So you're telling me they now just take 50% more healing? That seems a little broken. So I have to refresh it with Renew and Mist though. So that is a buff that I won't really be able to maintain. Okay. The fact that they take 15% more healing seems broken on a single target. But the fact that I can do it to two targets, or even three, if I get enough of these uh, Renew and Mists out, is crazy. When you heal with Envelop and Mist, which is going to be a big heal, or Vivify, 50% uh, of that heal is applied. Is this basically a Glimmer for Monks? Okay, hold on. This is... I gotta try this. We have to try this. Okay. So we're going to pop here, get some heals over time out. So we're going to heal this guy with a big heal. Are you kidding me? They're actually getting healed for more than my main target. What? And if you can get a bunch of these renewing mists out, you can get a lot of value. What? Okay, so it does apply a buff, so it's not like you'll be able to juggle it. As a monk, I thought first thing, what if you play Rising Mist, where you can kick to extend the duration of your Renew and Mist, but you don't extend the duration of Renew and Mist because it's not tied to Renew and Mist. It'll tar it's, uh, it's applied to Extended Life, Extend Life buff. Either way, you can get massive amount of healing on a small group of allies, or massive amount of healing into a singular target. 15% increased healing seems absolutely broken. Is this a magic effect? Can that even be dispelled? Magic? Not a magic. Can this be dispelled? Can this be removed? It's not a magic debuff. Or a magic bug that could be dispelled. So even if the enemy takes off from you and miss, like I can still heal him for a ton. So if I decide to just completely go full ham and just pump into a singular target, increase all the healing they get and just pump mass heals. I mean, for that while this while this buff is up, they will never die. 
Is that what you're saying? 50% increase. This seems like a bonkers legendary. Am I maybe overblowing this out of proportion? Or is this actually a bonkers legendary? This seems really strong. And this has multiple uses for like off healing multiple targets or... I think this would be insane in arena. Just maintain you and another target super easily. 50% more healing. Easy. <laughs> what? This is crazy. At least it seems crazy. What do you guys thoughts? And then we have gloves. Where Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and Ryzen Sun Kick heals for 50% of damage done to an injured ally within 20 yards. This is my favorite. I am a huge fan of monks playing the whole Invoke Chi G, the Red Crane playstyle. You know, maybe do the upwelling or rising mist. I think upwelling is going to be really strong. Spirit of the Crane to give you also mana. But the fact that your fists, your kicks, heal for 50% of the damage done constantly reinforces this monk damage. Look at this. I mean, it's not a huge heal whenever I go for a jab. Right? Not, not a massive heal. Oh, no, he DC'd. Otherwise, I won't be able to heal. Warlock, can you please come over? I, I'm out of range. I can't actually heal you guys. Yeah, because I can't really heal this guy, can I? Maybe I can. Oh, yeah, I can. Oh, yeah, I can. Big old kick. And we're going to go for a blackout kick. Yeah, it looks like sometimes I'm healing him and sometimes I'm not. But I'll be huge, huge... I'm in love with this legendary. I like it a lot. I like it a lot, a lot. I'm actually a huge, huge fan. It's not a massive heal because as a monk, you don't really do that much damage. Or at least as a healer monk, you don't really jab for hard or blackout kick or rising sun kick. But maybe you could make a build going all versa so your abilities do more damage. Some kind of like a, a build where it's all about crit versa, you know, just get the most amount of amp damage. And then you have your crane, which I think would add into the playstyle because your crane increases your damage as well. Your physical damage about 25%. This legendary benefits from it. Then you got all that mana back, so you're never worrying about mana. I love the idea of a monk just staying in melee and being a melee monk. Something about it for a healer just drives me insane. It's just, I love the idea. Huge fan of this Lego. I don't know how good it was going to be numbers-wise, but it's definitely super fun to play with. And finally, Brewmaster Monk. We're going to see what Brewmasters are getting with some of the legendaries. Actually, like this spec a lot. Your Breath of Fire ignites your right leg in flame for 8 seconds. Has a Blackout Kick and Spin and Crane Kick to deal 30% additional damage as fire damage. And refers the duration of Breath of Flame on the target. Okay, so when I set him on fire. Oh. Okay, so we are getting flaming kicks. I would love if there was an actual like animation of a you know right leg being on fire. I think that would be really cool. But I think it did extend the duration of the flame. Or no, I actually did not ever drop the brew on the enemy to begin with, did I? And now we have it. So there's a blackout kick. Yeah, it refreshes it. So we should just refresh it to 12 seconds. Okay. So I actually can maintain it all the time, huh? Wait, so what is the cooldown? 15 seconds, duration 12 seconds? Yeah, so now you basically taking out the three second uh, duration where it you just don't have the ability. And even if you're not AoE kicking, you can still get a blackout kick, like two of them, as soon as you do the fire attack. So Breath of Fire is there all the time. This is going to be pretty good for AoE situations, especially when you're having to tank a lot of enemies and they're around you, because you can just spin and crane kick as well to extend the duration. So in AoE, when you're taking enemies for quite a while, this is going to be really good. For constant AoE single target damage, I mean, there's going to be more Breath of Fire in there. And Flaming Kicks actually do quite a bit of damn. I wonder if you'll actually want to go for a lot of spin and crane kicks while it's up, just so you can get a little bit extra value on the damage. But we'll see. Yeah, not a bad legendary. It is more DPS focused. It will allow monks to pick up aggro and maybe have an easier time holding aggro. And spreading that around that a Breath of Fire buff could also be good. Is there any talents that play with Breath of Fire though? Spitfire. Increases the chance to reset cooldown. I don't think you really, think you really need that. Jinker for Bruce has a chance to set the monk in celestial on fire in celestial flames. Increases the damage of Breath of Fire. So maybe this ability could be good. 5% more Breath of Fire damage could be nice. Increases the damage reduction of Breath of Fire. Oh, so you can get it up to 10%. Okay. Yeah, so maybe there'll be some sort of a combination of abilities that you can put together with this LEGO. But it seems to be more of just doing damage. And not a bad LEGO at all. Just, I don't really know how good it's going to be. But it sounds interesting. Then we have the Boots, where Celestial Brew increases your armor by 15% for 7 seconds. And Pure from Brew has a 50% chance to not consume a charge. This seems like a good one for monk-specific uses. So normally Celestial Brew... Well, I don't really, I won't say normally, but the way that I would think we would use this as, as a monk is you would mostly use it to absorb magic damage. Because as long as you're maintaining your stagger, you have full stagger, so it's 75% more effective. 
So you would use your Celestial Brew from time to time to deal with maybe magic damage or physical damage. But if you're going to take a lot of physical damage, then this Lego increases your armor by 15%, which makes you take even less physical damage. As a monk, you are wearing leather gear. So it's not like you're actually uh, wearing, I guess, a lot of... I guess you're not really wearing a lot of uh, heavy armor. But increasing your armor does make you be able to withstand a lot more damage. So it goes up to... Physical damage reduction against target is 30% and 14. Okay, so it goes up like 3% against current target. Whatever that means. To be honest, I have no idea what current what current, current target means. But it does increase your physical damage reduction by a little bit. Yeah, so when you're popping it on... Okay, yeah, it seems, it seems good. It doesn't seem bad. I think this might give you a bit more physical damage reduction. Even though monks, I felt like, already were pretty good at dealing with physical damage. But also, I guess, also can double for magical. I guess if you're going to take, take a lot of physical damage and need everything to survive. This is going to be a good Lego to withstand more of those physical hits. And Purifying Brew has a 50% chance to not consume a charge. That's the one we actually can't test because I can't press Purifying Brew unless I have Stagger. So, if you're going to take a lot of heavy physical damage, a lot of damage that you can stagger. You know, magic damage, I think you can stagger to a certain point. But physical, or maybe you can't anymore. But enough physical damage, you can stagger. So if you're regular to staggering massive hits, this will make you super tanky. I think potentially could be good in certain dungeons for tyrannical, if certain bosses are just massive slammers with some massive chopper physical damage. Then we have gloves for Brewmaster. Kexmaster deals 30% more damage and has a one additional charge. What? Does it actually work? Hold on. Let me first see if the tooltip works. So Kexmaster says here it deals 1,800, uh, 1,086 damage. Put on the legendary and we get 1044. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think this legendary works. But this would be really good for monks to pick up aggro, having two charges of this ability and doing more damage. In Mythic Pluses, this could be a lot easier for you to get all that damage out that you need. So maybe potentially it could be a decent Lego. Won't say that this seems like abyss. I, it's surprising that some of these tanks actually have so much offensive legos for damage i think brewmaster is the one tank that i think has besides guardian druid has some of the most amount of offensive legendaries possible this one could be maybe useful it's just when it comes to tanks doing more damage i guess you could maybe use it in mythic pluses so you're more effective i guess that's how i would view it but when it comes to being a dps doing more damage makes sense healer doing more healing it makes sense doing utility things to improve your rotation makes sense and with tanks it only makes sense to give yourself some sort of a defensive or defensive to your allies which some of the other tanks have mostly the plate wearer ones so this is interesting don't really know if it would be good but so right now it just doesn't even work then we have a chest where tiger palm has a 10 percent chance to deal 300 percent normal damage and reduce the main cooldown of your bruise by one additional second it's 10 percent chance to do how much damage okay so it does 310 normally so it did about 310 with a give or take variance and armor on the mob. So there's going to be a moment where it will do more than... Th that was a crit. I don't really know if that counts really, does it? I guess I should also have my bruise up. And should reduce it by an extra second. There it goes. 800. Yeah, so it does increase the damage from time to time. And it does happen once every 10. I wonder if that has any kind of like bad luck protection to it attached. So... Let's say it's RPPM type of deal, like every mi it'll proc every so many attacks, so it'll be guaranteed. Or can it just get like a back-to-back -back jabs and it's just a small chance at all times? So you could get every jab an empowered version, technically. And not don't doesn't feel like it's going to be a deal breaker or a gameplay game changer legendary. I don't think it's going to be a playmaker. It seems all right. Then we have some legendaries that are non-spec specific. So I want to take a look at the ones that are available to the three specs of monk. And it looks like there may be some legendaries that are just missing right now. Because I tried to craft as many legendaries as I could, and it seems like I'm missing... What you most classes have is four different legendaries per spec, and four non-spec specific. Some have five, some have more. So let's take a look at monks. We've got, first of all, a ring, where touch of death cooldown is raised by 60. So your touch of death cooldown is now two minutes. This can be kind of useful. I mean, we can't test it. But getting your touch of death a lot more often in certain mythic pluses, I think for Brewmaster could be good. Maybe it also could be good for a healer as well. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Don't really know if this is going to be some crazy good. 
It seems okay. It's situational. If there's like a lot of moments where you can get a mob low enough and you just touch a death. Maybe as a healer you could be good for giving you a little bit extra chi orbs. I'm trying to figure out if there's any useful uh, use for this legendary from like a mythic plus rating, maybe even PvP perspective. Yeah, it just seems like a simple legendary. We got the belt where roll has an additional charge. This is actually a ability from Torghast where it can increase the amount of rolls that a monk has. So if you're playing with celerity, you actually have three rolls already. So you can go for four rolls back to back. Given monks more mobility, I think it's actually a decent legendary. Being able to move around more often, whether you're a brewmaster, woodwalker, or, or a uh, mistweaver. Uh, I feel like monks already have enough mobility, so getting an extra roll isn't huge. But it's not bad. I think what's nice is you get an extra roll, so you can play Cheater Peter or Tiger's Lust. So you basically have celerity in a way. It does reduce the cooldown of roll by five extra, uh, by extra seconds, though, with celerity. So, but still having three rolls and together with Tiger's Lust or Cheater Peter will give you at least more value, in my opinion. But yeah, I guess it's not a bad one. And then we got Helm, where you gain 12% haste for until cancelled after summoning your Celestial. How long is this actually going to be? So every monk has a Celestial. You have Zoen for your Windwalker. You have Dave the Ox for the Brewmaster. And then you have Yulon or the Red Crane, if you talent into it, for the healer. So... You have a you near know, target okay 14 seconds so you actually get it for 14 seconds that's kind of like an interesting like a bloodlust type of deal i think this could be pretty good for you know who this could be pretty good for for brewmaster or healer to get their damage up and running to get the haste up and running i think for brewmaster maybe it could be nice to kind of build up your resources very very quickly and get your energy flowing and rolling maybe that could be good it is tied to pretty long cooldowns of at least two minutes or three minutes, depending on the spec. Yeah, it seems like a simple legendary that isn't going to be abyss, but if you get this one, maybe certain specs could take advantage of it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it. I like the ones that monks have. I think the spec specific ones are definitely a game changer and a lot of them are really strong and maybe even overtuned. Now, I do hope that maybe they get like one or two non-spec specific, just some really cool unique stuff from Torghast. Because all the other classes have some really cool non-spec specific legendaries that are useful in one way or another for at least one spec or two. But monks, eh, I mean, they, they're probably not going to be those legendaries that you will actually end up getting much use off. Like, even mages have some legendaries where in specific situations like certain mythic pluses, raids, or even PvP encounters that would actually be really strong. But a second roll or a shorter touch of death just doesn't seem quite as the same. Not to take away from the fact that monks are got some really good ones. Like monks have actually really solid legendaries for both all three specs of Windwalker, Brewmaster, and Mistweaver. I just was hoping that the non-spec specific ones were a little bit more exciting. But this is still early beta. There's a good chance Blizzard will add some new cool ideas. Pretty sure Torghast has a variety of them. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really do hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts about monks and legendaries on the beta. What do you think of them? And I'll see all of you guys in another one.